And welcome back to Newsmax TV's coverage of America Votes 2016. I'm Miranda Kahn. We should know the results of the GOP primary in Arizona very soon. Some people waited for hours to cast their ballots, uh, but there's a lot at stake tonight. There are 58 delegates up for grabs in Arizona's winner-take-all format, with another 40 at stake in the caucuses in Utah. And as for the updated count of delegates already awarded, Donald Trump has earned 680, Ted Cruz has earned 423, and Governor John Kasich has 143. You'll note that Senator Marco Rubio had 166 delegates before he decided to drop out after his disappointing finish last week in Florida, his home state. With the polls in Arizona closing, let's hear what voters there had to say about who they supported. I'm a Trump supporter, so uh, I'm liking him, and uh, I think as far as uh, business goes and growing the economy. I think you could have a beer with him. He'd, he'd be fun to party with. Of course, I wouldn't mind going on one of his yachts partying with him, but... Uh, I think uh, Donald Trump is either a, a clown or a lunatic. Frankly, I, I kind of wish that the candidate pool was a little, a little smarter. Uh, but uh, I went with John Kasich. I voted for Hillary, Hillary voter. And why is that? Um, I like the experience that she has. Um, she's been uh, the secretary, and I think she's done a great job. And speaking of Hillary Clinton and the Democrats, voting is underway in Arizona, Utah, and Idaho. For them, people braving those chilly Boise weather conditions waiting to get inside. State Democratic Party leaders are hoping for a repeat of 2008 that saw record number of caucus goers. That's the very latest from the Newsmax Now newsroom. Let's send it back over to JD, who's standing by live in our studios. JD. Thanks very much, Miranda. And we got a look at those uh, chilly voters in Boise lined up for the Democrat primary or Democrat caucus in stark contrast to the warmer temperatures down in Arizona. Uh, the dialogue always. Uh, warm with passion with the two guests we have now they, they got it going pretty good earlier tonight uh skyping in from connecticut newsmax tv political analyst dick morris and of course from newsmax new york our good friend steve malsberg so dick morris uh from the perspective of a guy who has uh, been through a lot of campaigns and worked in a lot of states i'm kind of interested on an outsider's perspective on the state I used to represent in Congress, Arizona, what was the kind of checklist you would go through uh, trying to get a candidate across in the Grand Canyon state? Well, Arizona is a state that uh, is changing so dramatically because of the, Im the immigration, both legal and illegal. Uh, what is it, about 25% now uh, Latino vote in the state? Right. Um, it's not as much as in New Mexico, where it's over half. Uh, or California, where it's close to 40, but it's still, or 35, but it's still very, very high. So you have a rock-ribbed, conservative, Republican state uh, with immigrants coming in from the North and the South, most of whom are Democrats, the South being Ill be legal and illegal immigration, and the North being Rust Belt snowbirds going down to Arizona, where it makes more, more sense to live. And um, therefore, in effect, you have old Arizona against new Arizona uh, in a general election. Now, the way that will play out in the primary is difficult to see. Here, I think, in the primary, the most important question is when did you vote? If you look at the political season over the last month, uh, Trump had it all going for him uh, before the 1st of March. Uh, then on March 1st, there was some possibility that Cruz would be alive. And then when he won a bunch of primaries on the 5th, he was looking pretty good. And then on the 15th, when he lost a bunch, he was looking bad again. So you don't know how the vote changed as people voted in different periods. The other thing that is really kind of ghoulish about this is dead men are going to get a lot of the vote, politically dead yeah, well, men. Yeah, makes politically dead men, that's right, yeah. Oh, and I guess Bush and Carson those candidates who pulled out in the last month or two are still on the ballot. And at the time that many Arizonans voted, they were hotly in contention. Rubio was running second in the polling ahead of Cruz, second only to Trump. So I bet he gets a whole lot of votes uh, tonight that were in fact cast two weeks ago. And uh, that will have an impact on the results in what is after all the winner take all state. That's an advantage for Trump. 
Uh, Steve Malzberg, as I was listening to Dick Morris offer a litany of uh, new voters coming to Arizona, I could not help but think of uh, the late great Oregon Governor Tom McCall, who talked about all the Californians who moved northward to Oregon. Uh, this being a family show, I don't know if I should use the phrase he used uh, about, well, use your imaginations, California, anyway. Uh, but a lot of Californians, <laughs> the irony is what I saw in Arizona, Steve, uh, when I was in office, a whole lot of Californians would come over trying to get away from the scourge of Jerry Brown and company, and yet they'd start voting for guys on the left. Well, I, I can't explain that. That 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 has uh, is, is always been an enigma to me, and I, I don't understand that logic whatsoever. Uh, you're just going to build the same kind of, uh, of, of guess uh, structure that you ran away from in the first place. But I think it's going to be interesting tonight. And as Dick pointed out, it's not going to be a true indication because of all the previous voting that went on, and with all the other candidates in there, we'll we'll get a, a maybe a, a range of how much uh, that previous early voting went on, but. You know, with the terrorist attacks today, and, and you know, you, you don't want to politicize it too much, but the facts are facts, and we're talking about uh, tonight's results. I just wonder, um, you know, how much uh, Trump will resonate uh, with his plan to uh, quote unquote ban Muslims uh, or, or give them more scrutiny, um, because this is something that doesn't happen in a vacuum. And I wonder if we could break down eventually the people who voted tonight, who actually cast their votes tonight amongst the Republicans. Um, you know, was that a factor? And I'm sure we'll have exit poll information on that. I'd be very interested to see how that plays out. It's almost <laughs> a, 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 something that we could put on a, on a quiz, Dick Morris, for future political consultants. Compare and contrast the responses of Donald Trump with Ted Cruz because we just saw footage earlier where uh, New York Police Commissioner William Bratton there with uh, the leftist mayor Bill de Blasio was taking Ted Cruz to task for comments he made about increased surveillance of uh, neighborhoods with uh, heavy Muslim population and Ted Cruz uh, sought to clarify those remarks. One gets the feeling that Donald Trump would say to the mayor and the police commissioner, yeah, that's exactly what I said. So what? J.D., what that's about is that uh, last year, uh, New York City closed the counterterrorism office in the police department that was in charge of monitoring Muslim would-be terrorists in the New York City. It was in charge of monitoring mosques and imams uh, who had been uh, preaching jihadism and uh, monitoring people that went to their services and that hung out with them. And it was a very important intelligence basis and a big part of New York frustrating previous terror attacks. The fact is the bulk of the terror attacks that have been frustrated in the United States have not been by the feds, but have been by the NYPD, led particularly when Raymond, when Raymond Kelly was there. And now they're dismantling that unit and that's what Trump was criticizing. But to go back to tonight, I think Steve is right. The terror attacks, I think, will help Donald Trump because there is a perception that he's going to be tougher on that. And uh, I think that will be helpful. I want to make one other point. One among the reforms, in quotes, that Obama is pushing is more early voting. And it's supposed to be more convenient for voters uh, and will increase turnout. But the fact of the matter, it means that voters cast ill-informed ballots premature ballots. The last two to three weeks before election day are very important weeks for people to learn what's going on, particularly in the debates in the general election. And if you've already voted before you had all the facts before you, that's an ill-informed vote. The Which reason people want early voting is so the political machines can drag people out to vote and control their votes by watching them, by having a very controlled environment in the early voting process. See, I think the opposite yeah, is I true, Dick. And, and yeah. Steve, what about that? For me, early voting, or voting by mail especially, seems problematic for opportunities of voter fraud. Yeah, I Absolutely. agree. Absolutely. You know, yeah, I mean, I never understood it. I mean, in New Jersey, I don't even have to show my ID, which which drives me crazy. But early voting and, and, and by mail and that, you know, they're talking about and JFK Jr. actually said this before he died in a, in a George Magazine interview or something uh, that he that he wrote or a piece that he wrote about Internet voting. I mean, I can't even fathom that. But this I don't like this early voting. And I wonder, Dick, when did this become commonplace? Because 
I don't remember it being so commonplace, you know, in so many different states. Uh, about began, a minute to respond to that, Dick. We got about a minute left. It began as a boutique kind of thing in Florida and in Texas. And then it spread throughout the country. And uh, now almost every state has an early voting option. And you're absolutely right. It's the key to fraud. It's an invitation to fraud. But more importantly, it's an invitation to the old days of machine voting. Because what the bosses do, what the operatives do, is they go into a nursing home and they set up a polling place there. And all the people in the nursing home come downstairs and vote. Or if it's a mail ballot, they collect the ballots and mail them in at once. It's a way to restore machine control of people voting, particularly in nursing homes, on Indian reservations, and places where a lot of Democrats congregate. Hey, let's see. Machine control equals fraud. I got you, Dick, and I appreciate that. Gentlemen, we thank you for your time, and we leave you with this thought. I mentioned Oregon earlier, and Tom McCall as governor way back when in the 70s, 60s and 70s. Understand that now in Oregon, the only way you vote is to vote by mail. So I, maybe that speaks to uh, uh, that state actually getting tough on giving driver's licenses to illegals. In the midterms last time, you may recall, there was a, a voter initiative and overwhelmingly it passed saying, no, don't give driver's licenses to illegals. The new governor has another thought, another thought on that. Steve Malsberg, Newsmax, New York, Dick Morris in Connecticut. Gentlemen, you have our thanks. Up next, Michael Patrick Flanagan and Jennifer Burke checking in from Arizona. Stay with us.